Narayanam Namaskrityam Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Naran Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Tato Jaya Mudirayat Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai So, as we were saying uh, yesterday, there's a very, very famous uh, English uh, literary character. I think it's William, William Johnson. Yeah, something like that. Boswell, William Johnson. He was the uh, author of the first English dictionary also. also. Yeah. And he said there are two kinds of knowledge. Either you know a thing yourself or you know where to find it. <laughs> it's very good. Also, another Nobel laureate, uh, Zient Georgi, seemed like a nice person. You know, he said, uh, books are for things you don't want to remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, so you know where you can find them the same way. Yeah. And he also said there's a certain limit to how much you can remember. <clears throat> Refresh. So, how, books are the basis. We've been looking at that, you know. The Bhaktivedanta Library, we started off with that in our, our Diary of a Traveling Creature, it's the ultimate journey. So we went discussed a little bit about interfaith dialogue, traveling everywhere, trying to find the, uh, the poor uh, incarcerado souls who have been put in jail in their hearts by bad intelligence and deliver them you know, the, uh, the divine inspiration of Krishna's mercy so they can return to the light and engage in service once again. So traveling everywhere, looking for Sita, yeah. interfaith dialogue. And uh, from our side, you know, we're, we're offering uh, Rama's ring, we're offering the Bhaktivedanta library. Uh, in our previous presentation, we discussed the content, <clears throat> but now we're discussing the, um, uh, how, how to read the books. <clears throat> So if we know our way around the Bhaktivedanta library, we know Prabhupada's books, and then ourselves, we know, okay, we can, we can find these verses that we're thinking of pretty easily. And this is at the end of the third chapter of the first canto, where Sukadeva Goswami has basically presented you know, a summary of everything. What is, what is the problem? What do the sages want to know? You know? Uh, answers generally in chapter two and chapter three, all the incarnations, and coming to the conclusion that the literary incarnation in this age is Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. This is universally true all over the world. So please repeat Srimad Bhagavatam 1340. Idam Bhagavata Nama. Idam Bhagavatam Nama. Koranam Brahma Samitam. Puranam Brahma Samitam. Uttama Shloka Charitam Uttama Shloka Charitam Chakara Bhagavan Rishi Chakara Bhagavan Rishi Nishreya Saya Lokasya Nishreya Saya Lokasya Danyam Swasti Ayato Mahat Danyam Swasti Ayanam Mahat Idam This Bhagavatam, book containing the narration of the personality of Godhead and his pure devotees. Nama, of the name. Puranam, supplementary Vedas. Brahmasamitam, incarnation of Lord Krishna. Uddhama Shloka, personality of Godhead. Charitam, activities, chakara. He made, compiled. 
Bhagavan, incarnation of the personality of Godhead, Rashi, Shiv Shiv Yasadev, Nishreya Shaya, for the ultimate good, Vokasya, of the people, Danyam, fully successful, Svastiyayanam, all blissful, Mahat's perfect. Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of God. It is compiled by the sage Shiva Vyasa, the incarnation of God. It is meant for the ultimate good of all people. It is all successful, all blissful, and all perfect. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu declared that Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless sound representation of all of Vedic knowledge and history. There are selected histories of great devotees who are in direct contact with the personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Lord Sri Krishna and is therefore non different from him. Srimad Bhagavatam should be worshipped as respectfully as we worship the Lord. Thereby we can derive the ultimate bliss of the Lord through his careful and patient study. At the end of Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna tells Arjuna, one who uh, hears this dialogue between you and me uh, worships me with his intelligence. So we can worship Krishna with physical, physical activities and paraphernalia. We can pay attention. Or we can understand, you know, understand what he's saying. It's an interesting English word. We can get underneath, understand what he's saying. Yeah. Hmm. As God is all light, all bliss, and all perfection, so also is Srimad Bhagavatam. All bliss, all light, and all perfection. We can have all the transcendental light of the Supreme Brahman, Sri Krishna, from the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam, provided it is received through the medium of the transparent spiritual master. Lord Chaitanya's private secretary, Khilakhwarup Damodar Goswami, advised all attending visitors who came to see the Lord at Puri to make a study of the Bhagavatam from the person Bhagavatam. person Bhagavatam is the self-realized bona fide spiritual master. And through him only can one understand the lesson of Bhagavatam in order to receive the desired result. So Lord Chaitanya says, Yare Deke Tari Koha, Krishna Upadesh, Amar Agna, Guru Hoi Tari De, Amar Agna, on my order, you become guru and deliver your neighborhood. Yeah, you know, the people you know, the circle of friends that you have. You know, like presenting Gita, Bhagavatam. So we may be uh, fearful. How can I do this? Well, Lord Chaitanya has given the order. So we can adopt it at, le at different levels. You know, uh, For example, the self-realized spiritual master. But your level of self-realization may not be on the level of the gopis. <laughs> Prabhupada was stating... Sometimes that, you know, Vishwanath Chakravarti, he can recite certain verses, he can you know, talk about certain things, but not me. So he was presenting himself as, you know, as not qualified to uh, present Gopi Bhava. Well, somebody else may not even be qualified to be Krishna's mother. Okay, somebody, you know, we're coming on down. What is self-realized? There's so much limitation. So our level of realization may be that I, I'm a fool. Actually realized that before I thought I when devotee devotee joined ISKCON, ISKCON in San Diego, very prominent person, uh, and, he, and he said when he, he began when he joined, you know he he uh, he thought he was Krishna, but he said but after about three weeks he realized he wasn't Krishna, he was Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> okay, so if if somebody comes to the realization that I am a fool, okay, and and I'm going to present Sri Mahabhagavatam. I'm going to read it, you know, and maybe whatever level of explanation I'm giving, you know, from different sources and resources. Okay. Then it's also self realized. And maybe we're communicating people to honestly what is our level of comprehension of the content. Okay. Then we can get the desired, desired result. One can derive the study, one can derive from the study of Shema Bhagavatam all benefits that are possible to be derived from the personal presence of the Lord. It carries with it all the transcendental blessings of Lord Sri Krishna that we can expect from this personal content. So to me, this is a little better purport than uh, the one, uh, what's the one, uh, Krishna Swadham Opakade. 
in the beginning, Prabhupada talks about Dhamma there. I mean, they're both good, but say that this is more like in terms of a propaganda, this for the book. You know, there Prabhupada's explaining a little bit more about the context. And of course, the last paragraph is very similar. So these two purports we find very, very nice, you know, for presenting. You know, what, 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 is we, what are we presenting? What do we what think the Bhagavatam is? So any comments? Anybody has any questions here? Okay. What, what, what happened oh, yeah. to that devotee? What happened to the devotee who realized he's Lord Chaitanya? Did he become ever become devotee? Oh yeah, he's a very prominent devotee, big guy now. I don't want to mention his name like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I'm speculating who he is. You know. Okay, very mm -hmm. nice person. So we're working on our own little effort to try and consolidate whatever we know. And if anybody thinks it's worth anything, I don't know if I know or not. So we, again, we just now we're, we're on this uh, books. Read my books. We have the have the Bhakti Vedanta Library, one of our topics here. And the books, and now read the books like we we're discussing yesterday. And as we discussed uh, before, the part first part, there is the the Bhakti Vedanta Library, and it's very well organized. You know, but the heart is the Shema Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita is. Uh, this is a class on the Shema Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita Isopanishad, Shudis, they're all preliminary knowledge. And we can see so many other things that Prabhupada gave us are extracts, illuminations of the Bhagavatam. Okay. So then, uh, one perspective, which we've, of course, many mentioned many times before, but this is our consolidation. When Srila Prabhupada came to San Francisco, Berkeley Temple, on the lower right, you can see a picture of Prabhupada there. On his, on his right, you see Tamal Krishna Maharaj. On his left, you see Brahmananda Swami. They're both there, you know, very special time. And uh, these are the devotees that were visiting or in the temple, some of them. Uh, some people like me, for example, I was uh, off around to the corner at the bank, I think, when this picture was taken like that. I'm kind of an impersonalist. You know? So uh, we heard from Srila Prabhupada's lips. And now people can hear from your lips, you can say. I heard from Hanumapri Sakswami lips. So I'm taking him as a Shiksha guru in a connection to our, our Acharya, to my, to my Acharya, my Samstapak Acharya, Shraesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami. Prabhupada said, anyone who chants Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shirvaita Gadadar Shivas Adi Gora Bhaktivinda and follows it with Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Has achieved the perfection of life. But if you want to preach, you should probably read my books. So this is, there it is, a very simple process. And so many times, of course, we can find this emphasized so many times. You know, that, you know, uh, reading Prabhupada, chanting Hare Krishna is sufficient, especially, especially for liberated souls. You know. But most of the people that Prabhupada initiated, he says in chapter 7, Ayurveda, uh, are not liberated souls. Therefore, a deity worship is essential. And also intellectual engagement is essential. You know. So we read the books, you know, so we can become qualified to, uh, to preach. You know. And we also read the books to become uh, uh, purified to become qualified. Okay. A very, very nice picture of Radha Gokulananda who were there in the Berkeley Temple, San Francisco. Yeah. And of course, we, we were there Pujaris for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Now, also interesting point here is that uh, the, the first thing we're trying to get, of course, in the, uh, in the process of how to study is to get par study partners. You know, Sangat Sanjayate Kama. This is from the Bhagavad Gita Shamrita. One's desires and ambitions develop from the company he keeps. She, he, or it keeps. So if we get association, you know, with people who have a desire to 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 study Prabhupada's books, read Prabhupada's books, then we'll get the desire. That's the most important thing. You know. So we can have an association with teachers. We can have association with fellow students. You know? We can have association with, uh, with our students. 
these three are very nice and we should have all of them. Uh, but then getting association with teacher, another thing we heard the same time from Prabhupada was one reporter asked, Swamiji, what will happen to your movement when you die? And Srila Prabhupada report, re responded quite, quite firmly, you know, I will never die. I will live forever in my books. And of course, we've cited and other people can also mention, and hopefully the, the reader themselves can experience this is direct contact, personal feelings, personal reciprocation, you know, feeling uh, respect and, and you know, humility for Prabhupada and, and feeling his concern and affection for us each individually. The gopis live at three levels. They are good citizens of Nanda Maharaja's village. They milk cows, make yogurt, hassle over the price of the goods, and pay taxes. We should all be good citizens of ISKCON. You know. And uh, you know, if there's some problem in the institution, okay, you should deal with that within the institution. But it's an institution. You know. It's a formalities, relationships, a little bit impersonal. The second level, the gopis have their own friends. You know, so they would look around. They would talk a little confidentially to each other and to the cowherd boys about what was happening. So within ISKCON, we should follow the you know situation, be members of the institution. But within that, the the biggest administrative you know person, his closest friend, maybe the the lowest simple you know worker, pot washer. Yeah. So we have our friends. You know, that's ISKCON means friends means friends. You know. Um. And then finally, when they heard the sound of Krishna's flute, you know, they were, they were milking their cows, looking very organized. And they started to look around and talk about what was happening, hearing Krishna's flute from out in the forest with the cow and the cowherd boys. And then they remembered something. Oh, they, had, they all remembered their own individual, unique, personal relationships with Krishna. Oh, Krishna plays that song for like this and that. Maybe Krishna's thinking of me now. <laughs> So finally, we should all have our own personal relationship with Shri Prabhupada, individual, unique, where we feel Prabhupada knows us and, and we know him. And even if everybody else goes to hell, you know, we, will, we will continue serving Shri Prabhupada, everybody. Everybody in ISKCON should have that feeling. Of course, it's going to be through so many transparent via media. And as Prabhupada is saying here, one excellent via media is his books. Of course, the books tell you, get a guru, get association, do this, brush your teeth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we want to read Prabhupada's books. We get the motivation um, from uh, association, and especially association from Prabhupada, which is in his books. Then, okay. And then the next, next thing is, is process. Okay, association, process. We need systems. I mean, Trying to develop this kind of system, that kind of system. And this, this a few years ago when we were having a, a, a Ministry of Education Symposium in Seattle, I was giving a class in the Bhagavatam. And I, I remember this section where Prabhupada says in the Upadesh Amrita uh, that we, we, in this movement, we require everybody to rise early in the morning by 4 a.m. Yeah. Uh, Tim Mangal Artik, read Srimad Bhagavatam. And perform kirtan. So the complete citation is here in this Krishna consciousness movement. Yeah, okay. We require everyone to rise early in the morning by 4 a.m. Of course, this is by Brahma Mahorta we should be chanting and attend the Mongol Arti or morning worship. Then read Srimad Bhagavatam, perform kirtan, and so forth. Thus, we hold continuous activities in devotional service 24 hours daily. So, six Goswamis, uh, how's it go? Sankhya Purvaka Namagana Nartabi Kalavasane Krito. They divided their days up Sankhya Purvaka Namagana Nartana. Sankhya Purvaka Namagana Nartana. Maybe something else, okay. So they were they were chanting, they were singing songs, and they were dancing. Okay. So thus we hold continuous activities in devotional service 24 hours a day. This is called Sato Vritti. 
or following in the footsteps of the previous acharyas who expertly filled every moment of time with Krishna conscious activities. That's from Nectar Instruction, verse number three. So here it is. This is the thing, like, you know, it should be written in stone that every morning we have class. You know, before breakfast, after, well, I might say by the time the sun comes up, but of course, we're very strict about seven o'clock. Shingartik, I mean, 7.30, it would be class. Uh, something like that, till maybe 8.30. And actually, Guru Puja was after, after the class. You know, thank you, Prabhupada. And then some prasad, you know. And by then, we're ready then to con talk, talk to different people, uh, Sankirtan partners, you know, different so people like that. And then, uh, then carry out the message of the Bhagavatam. But we're, you know, we're studying the Bhagavatam to teach it. The sages of Naima Sharanya, Vyasadeva, everybody, everybody's engaged. You know, Sukadeva Swami and Maharaj Pariksit, uh, to hear the Bhagavatam so they can become purified of material uh, connection, so they can become fit preachers of the Bhagavatam themselves. Because Maharaj Pariksit acts, acts, acts as the perfect, perfect student. I think sometimes it even says that some of his questions and so on are, are given for the benefit of others you know, who are there. So we can even act as a, as a preacher by being a student. Yeah. Yeah. Find your position. So this is what we're, what we're suggesting, how to read the Bhagavatam. Okay, every day, every day having a, a system is our daily morning class. And once we have that, everything else tends to be pretty easy in terms of you know, organizing stuff. Okay, and the right we have how to read the Bhaktivedanta library. So we'll be talking about first, get associates. Yeah. Two, you know, follow some kind of systems. Okay. Three, and memorize. You know, take it to heart. Content logically. There we go. So we should know things. You know, no stories, no verses like that. We should do this, especially if we're going to be pundits and be scholars. You know. But logically, it means we can organize it. Okay, this is a part of the story about uh, Ritasura. And how in his previous life he was Maharaj Chitraketu. Yeah. And of course, this is for uh, more sentimental people, people who are more absorbed in their body, their, you know, this kind of thing, not completely ectomorphic intellectuals. That's the Puranas. And so, so many stories. So, it's very easy then to associate the ideas and the concepts and stuff with different people, different pastimes. Daksha tells us a very strong story. We can contrast Daksha with Ajamil very nicely in terms of their activities, their perspective. One was sinful, uh, but, but, but um, Daksha was uh, offensive, but not sinful. And Ajamil was uh, sinful, but not offensive. Yeah. So very, very nice way to organize everything else. Get associates, you know, and then start uh, applying you know, systems, make them into habits. So your body and mind and everything else are just, you know, naturally inclined you know? and then finally then we're learning content you know logical structure and arrangement okay that's the end of our presentation here there we go oh that's nice yeah yeah the flowers are krishna trying to smile at us smile back so it's nice the facility with powerpoint like this okay continuing how to read the bhaktivedanta library okay. one as a ritual, this is a different dimension then. Okay, with your association, with your getting Prabhupada's association for as a ritual. One time in one class, Prabhupada says, come to these classes to learn something, not just as a ritual. And it's kind of like he's looking at all the devotees there. He says, all right, come as a ritual, <laughs> but try to learn something. Yeah. There's a second one, maybe. What does learning mean? We take it in the West, if you look up the... Uh, the, the philosophy of education in the Britannica, which we've done, it explains that all Western Western philosophers of education, even though they're very, very different, they basically agree that after Socrates, that education means to teach people to be able to use rational thought. Yeah. Content is karma. You do it as a ritual, you acquire things, you acquire facts. Okay. But then next thing is jnana. You begin to logically understand it. Ah, oh, this is connected to that. Oh, this is the same thing again. Oh, this is being emphasized. Let me highlight, highlight, highlight in, that in black text. 
bold. So uh, read the books as a ritual, yeah. And uh, then, okay, develop an understanding like we're doing now. And then start with dhyana or smarnam, which is concentration, concentration. Yeah. We're reading the book or reading it with meditation, concentration. Of course, this will come into lyrical things like poetry, you know, rhythm, meter, all these kind of things, which will allow us different levels of smarnam. First level is smarnam, as we understand from uh, Shravanam Kirtan and Vishnu Smarnam, is logical understanding. Because now we can keep the thing in a kind of proportion at one time. But this becomes uh, more expanded, more constant, more deep. And then finally, we, can, we should be able to come wake, fully awake. Nitya Seda Krishna Prema Sadya Kabunaya Shravanadi Shudachite Karaji Udaya. You wake up. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. And now, of course, the Bhagavatam is our eternal companion, <laughs> eternal companion. And we're reciting and chanting in terms of different prema. Prema is the aggregate of different rasas, you know, combining these things together and reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. So I think, okay, we have a little right on here, okay. Our lion, lions on bicycles. It should be fun. Yes. Right from the very beginning, you know, if, if you can always remember, always remember that if you can have fun reading the Bhagavatam, that should take priority over over you know learning the over be over formalities, over formalities and stuff. Just have a we read the Bhagavatam, you know, okay, so I get this system, I got that system. Yeah. But more important than that is is reading it and having fun. Of course, you know. Uh, it's priority, but it doesn't mean that uh, having systems and systematic studies is not important. But it shouldn't eclipse eclipse our idea to be associating with Krishna and enjoying it. The student doesn't learn what you teach. The student learns who you are. So if you hate Srimad Bhagavatam, the student will learn to hate Srimad Bhagavatam. But for some reason, the Amagraha, they'll study it, you know, as a formality and learn this and that and get a diploma and you know, be able to, uh, to defeat your enemies in, in the institutional aspect. Like that. So it should be fun. Yeah. The lion says this. Okay. Then after that, we can organize seminars, we can have diplomas, Prabhupada had those from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, we can do workshops, you know, dramas, theater. It's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So, so many details, and of course we have these, we've done these ourselves, and we're wondering, I guess at this point, maybe we'll, we'll stop with developing the Bhaktivedanta Library. We have Interfaith Dialogue. We have one example of uh, Interfaith Dialogue in ISKCON, which we gave with ISKCON San Diego. And then we've got the second topic, which is the Bhaktivedanta Library, what we have to offer from our side. And of course, that, that means that, you know, we have to also study the books. Now again, all these details, details, how to study, you know, uh, number two, right? different systems and ways like that. So I think that's it. Okay. So any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions? Anything fun? <laughs> Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. This is an excellent summary of the, the goal behind uh, studying Srila Prabhupada's books and how to study. Pretty concentrated, actually. <laughs> Uh, yes. I, I was uh, uh, hearing a couple of uh, lectures from, uh, I guess not exactly lectures, but a, a presentation or course on uh, uh, studying and teaching Srimad Bhagavatam from Vrindavan. They have this new institute, Bhagavata Mahavidyalaya. Yeah. So, so it, it's, uh, they kind of presented how to, you know, how to give one day seminar and five day seminar, things like that. You and also read uh, uh, Bhagavatam in, uh, in less than a year. Uh, it, it has, if you put all the translations together in a book format, uh, it, it's about the size of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, or even smaller. So you, you so every day, 15 minutes in one year, you can finish all the all the details and how 
it can be done and some highlights and okay you read the whole chapter then summarize the points things like that it sounds like these people are germans <laughs> yeah but the good thing is they're also um, liberal in giving out that information lot yes. of people, lot, lot of people don't share how to teach their, their tricks and techniques but uh, yeah. so so liberally they kind of compiled all these ideas and presented uh, uh, this one that you presented, Guru Maharaj, it, it would be a pretty good thing, uh, uh, you know, to communicate the bhava, uh, everything that you're saying, different levels of studying. So besides uh, the process that they have, the associated bhava that you present to you, this is a very, this will be very, very, very useful lecture for anybody who wants to teach uh, Srimad Bhagavad. Yeah. So that, this, this is our idea, the diary of a traveling creature, the ultimate trip. So thank you. Please don't forget this. Please stay on board. Please help design the tour. And it sounds like right away, uh, one of the first suggestions is that we should, you know, Monkey and Piggy and the, uh, our, the good ship, whatever its name is, should, uh, should come on into the, uh, the Vrindavan and have a nice dialogue with the, uh, what do you call it, the body? Bhagavat, what's it called? Bhagavat Mahavidyalaya. Yeah, Bhagavat Mahavidyalaya. You have some, maybe some dialogue with them. You know. It's kind of, kind of like if any, any teacher, well, you know, the teacher sometimes requires a payment from the student, but it's for a certain purpose. You know, if he's like mm -hmm. Sukracharya, <laughs> once payment, you know, in terms of prestige, authority, money, these kind of things. Then, then, then the, the, the knowledge is worthless. You know. Whatever they're presenting is not really all that valuable. Maybe you can extract something out of it, you know. But right from the beginning, so we shouldn't worry about people any kind of knowledge that people have who they're not distributing it freely, because they're right from the very beginning. It's an oxymoron. It's not knowledge. <laughs> they don't know anything. So we can ignore them. We can pass urine upon them all from a great height. <laughs> That's a French guy, sir. So, who is here now? Is Mother Manjari's, what you call it, system here? I click here, it goes up. I click here. Okay, that, we'll get one comment section there. Sugopi Radha Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my obeisances. If you accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. How can we remain submissive to the Bhaktivedanta purports and simultaneously use critical thinking skills when we read? Okay. Uh, we, by, by remembering, uh, okay, let's see here. It's nice. Okay. I have the symptom of Uttamadakari. <laughs> I can, find, I can find, find what I'm, resources. I have resources here. I can siphon the scriptures, maybe. <laughs> Library, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, four, okay, if you don't use them, you lose them, you gotta use these things, 434, okay, everybody please repeat, Tadvidi Pranipatena, Tadvidi Pranipatena, Pari Prashena Sevaya Pari Prashnena Sevaya Upadekshanti Te Gyanam Upadekshanti Te Gyanam Gyani Nastatva Darshinaha Gyani Nastatva Darshinaha Yeah, maybe we can learn the Devanagari. So the first word is tat, means that. Well, Krishna has been talking about sacrifice, you know, so that, that knowledge, that knowledge of what, that knowledge of sacrifice what I'm talking about here. Okay. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master, inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. Okay.
This looks nice. Krishna. Okay. Shugopi Radha, can you read this? Yes, Guru Maharaj. What does it In say? This... Read it for okay. In this verse, both blind following and absurd inquiries are condemned. Not only should one hear submissively from the spiritual master, but one must also get a clear understanding from him in submission and service and inquiries. Okay, so we don't blindly accept anybody as guru. Well, in some ways, I mean, all of us have a innate knowledge. This is our, our nature, we know. And we have knowledge. So even as a small child, you have some ability to know, to understand, to experience. Okay. And so then we're accepting different persons, which of course naturally are the parents. Our parents are naturally our first spiritual masters and then other family members, and we're accepting them. But it's not blind faith because we know we're like God, little, little, little God. <laughs> yeah, but we are. Okay. And then as we go on, you know, then we're using develop different ways of uh, discerning what we consider to be truth and, and critical, you know, thinking, things like that. So this verse, I always like this because this is Tadviri Panipat Penam, very significant verse. I've heard Prabhupada said it's the most important verse in Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. In this verse, both blind following yeah, is condemned. And it's not only that we, you know, because some groups, they say, oh, you've got to believe this fanaticism is there. Even you know big Christian organizations you know, promoting blind faith, but it's so easily this turns into the destructive fanaticism like that. But it's not only that we don't like it; it's condemned. You know? So God always gives us enough enough knowledge. If it's, we're not getting enough knowledge and proper things to to apply critical thinking you know, to these things in, in a healthy way, then there's something wrong. You know, we shouldn't. The person is not a bona fide spiritual master. So going on reading like that and using critical thought and probably encouraging that, chast chastising devotees for not being critical in their discussions and their readings and stuff. Yeah. But it's not with a destructive attitude. The attitude comes before the knowledge. That's our, 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 our hypothesis. Uh, Western knowledge, science, is, starts off with not examining the attitude, why we want to know. You know? They're just starting off with knowledge for knowledge's sake, you know, which is... You know, look at it, analyze it critically again. Many faults. So we start with a desire. We start with some motivation, love. Love is the basis of everything, not not, not chit, not knowledge. You know? So big, big challenge to the basic philosophy of modern science. You know? But there's a lot of it in this, a lot of scientists, Nobel laureates who are talking about this love and affection they have. You know? We've seen this, see, they, they have, they have, even though they may not be, it's just they have a love for truth, for, for love for systems, love for mechanical knowledge. Okay, they, they like their machines. They love their machines. I've seen this. Nobel, Linus Pauling, Nobel laureate, he loved his atoms and molecules. He loved his little models. Okay, they appreciate this. This is Krishna. You know? But then other kinds of you know, way, ways of, 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 of having knowledge are there beyond these mechanistic senses. So there it is. You know, we, we, uh, what do you call it? Blind following is condemned. You know? So if we're not finding the content for a critical discussion, critical inquiry, then we're not not bona fide. You know? But of course, at a certain level, the criticism we talk about art criticism, criticism of aesthetics. You know? and that's more than just applying like some mechanical process to it, which you can do. You know, your Prabhupada's books, you can look at them. The Bhagavatam is systematically organized in terms of Euclidean geometry. You get my point? <laughs> Here's this point. And these things are connected like this. And, and oh, it looks like we have to use three dimensions you know, to analyze Sukadeva Goswami's presentation, to analyze Prabhupada's logic here. Prabhupada's actually working in three dimensions. So when a piece of paper will have uh, up and down, you know, right and left, and... Uh, uh, bold and non-bold. <laughs> okay, so we can start adding in, you know, three dimensions or a large point, small point. Yeah. So you see, critical thinking is quite a thing. Well, many people talk about critical thinking but without any critical thought of what it is. Yeah. The other thing is absurd inquiry. That means that whatever we're in, we're, we're studying 
it's not just for superficial sense gratification of my mind you know, or my body, but it has practical application. What's practical? That it's actually for, for, for satisfying Krishna ultimately. Okay, so does that give some perspective? Do you have any other thoughts on the, the topic? Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Yeah, are you being critical? <laughs> what you said about many people talk about critical thinking without giving any critical thought to what it is was <laughs> striking. <laughs> yes, it's like this term, I saw, it's becoming so popular, uh, what do you call it, pseudoscience. In, in the Wikipedia, I don't know how many times this word of pseudoscience occurs in the Wikipedia. But as far as I know, it's it's it's, it's a pseudo scientific term. Yeah, you know, AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science. I bet there's not a, not a single definition of what is a pseudoscience. There may be, you know. Okay, if there is, let's talk about it. You know, otherwise it's just applied to anything, yeah, everything. You know, psychology is a pseudo science. Chemistry is a pseudo science. Physics alone is reality. Any anybody else? And only nuclear physicists. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shil Prabhupada. Hare this Krishna. Is, is it warm there where you are? Yes, mid mid eighties today. <laughs> oh my goodness! You have mosquitoes? Not yet. <laughs> oh, this is impossible. You must be someplace else. You cannot be in Florida. There's no mosquitoes. <laughs> Spring. It's coming. Maharaj, you were talking about uh, the attitude before approaching. Uh, the scriptures as well. I, I found that like very important because uh, you know, like even like before before chanting or before reading Prophet's books or the purports, um, I noticed like even our great acharyas always in a prayerful mood and would say a prayer before even opening the book or, or you know starting japa, and that helps uh, frame the right uh, mindset. So to speak. This, yeah, this is very, very. Again, my logical, just logical ideas on this. Hey, we're going to go back to nectar instruction. I gave nothing, nothing about this in terms of the uh, the Bhakti Vedanta library so far. So I want to, our idea is we'll we'll present, we'll do this, we'll do the you know, Bhakti Vedanta library interfaith dialogue, and then make some PowerPoint shows, some presentations, and then we'll get out and start meeting people. And seeing like, you know, uh, what they want, what they want. You know? Okay, because if we go to the preface of Nectar Instruction, which we're taking as the basis of everything, it says here, okay, there we go. Okay, can you read that, uh, Shubra? Wait one second here. Advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower. You could put that in front of the in front of your school there and have it posted on the wall. All those nobody allowed to enter this school with a bad attitude. <laughs> yeah. What does attitude mean? Know that you're receiving the, the, the information. What are you uh -huh. are you enthusiastic or nonchalant? You know, that's the, the energy you put towards it. The motive, your intent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, airplanes are different. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not actually. It's the attitude. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An airplane has uh, three attitude indicators. You know. Let's see, what we got here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh. What are they? It's a little too small, maybe. Yeah. yeah. One is uh, pitch, pitch, and it tells you how much the airplane is up and down. It's it's pitch forty degrees up or forty degrees down, so you know that. Another one is uh, is a uh, roll, how much your right wing is down or your left wing is down, pitch roll, and y'all, y a w l. You can you close your microphone there. We're getting getting sounds of alligators. Somebody, somebody. <laughs> yeah, 
pitch, roll, and yaw. There we go. Okay, that's a nice one. Okay, uh, yaw. Sorry, not yaw. Yaw. Okay. So yaw is how much your nose is faced away from going forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Airplanes don't always go with their noses forward, and so you got to keep bringing the nose back in. So when the uh, the pilot's coming back, coming in after, you know, after a uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, for 14 hour flight from Los Angeles to, to, to Calcutta. And there's a mild typhoon kind of wind blowing on the airport. He's trying to put a, a 747 airplane down with 500 people and 200,000 pound tons of cargo. And he's got something like about a, maybe about, about a, you know, maybe like a 10 foot window, you know, uh, you know, too low or too high, he's gonna crash. So his airplane has to have a good attitude towards the runway. It's got to have the right pitch, the right roll, and the right yaw. Oh, I forgot his name now. Krishna something. He's a very nice devotee from Argentina. Now, he was a 747 pilot. And he said, you've got to have super reflexes. Not, not an automatic system around yet. Fast enough can do it to bring it down like that. So this is the bhava. This is the booty. This is the perspective. This is the attitude. On the basis of that, we think, manas, the mind, you know. So this is the consciousness, you know, the perspective, the bhava, like that. And, and this is what we establish during Mongol Arctic. <laughs> After breakfast, we make the plans, you know. So yes, it's a fact. Thank you. Is, you know, we've got to have the right attitude. And we, of course, we're always losing it, we're establishing it. But the best time to settle it in is, you know, and again, very early in the morning before Mongol Arctic. And that time we get our perspective, our attitude. We can work on it. And during the day, let's keep it together. But on the basis of the mode of passion, we can start thinking, making plans, and then acquiring things. So any, any more comments about this? It's a very nice topic, you know. Marge, another, another analogy is a, a, the ballet position of a ballet dancer. When when they have like they say the right attitude, they have the position where the 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 leg is raised and bent at the knee, similar to <laughs> okay. position. I got, I got a picture here, no? There you go. Oh, yeah. bent. Etymology. What does that word mean? Professor Professor Subhashini Subhashini. What does et etymology mean? Oh, professor is quiet. The, the history of words, no? Yes, the origin of words, history of words. Thank you. Okay. There's something very nice. Uh, usually it comes up like this. You know, there's a thing called, well, I got images going here. I got to put on all, turn off the images. Okay, yeah. This is, uh, this is very nice. This is the et etym online. You're selling tennis shoes. Posture or position of a figure in a statue, statute, statue or painting. From the French, at, attitude. The Italian, attitude. Disposition, posture, aptness. From late Latin, aptitudin. Nominative, aptitudo. Okay. Okay. Um, well, what was what is it? Doesn't tell us what the uh, original. Aptitude. Okay. How to end a fight in three to five seconds? Okay, this is very good. For, okay. Uh, it doesn't give us the Latin, the Latin resource, you know. But it mean it means like uh, orientation, you know, attitude, aptitude. I guess aptitude would be like, what is your ability? You know, yeah. What is your inclination towards study? The students study like that. Yeah. Wow. Oof. Because educate one of one of Ravana's one of Ravana's heads was dedicated to drinking. Okay, Mr. Boston's bar guide. <laughs> like that. Another one was dedicated to romance. Another one was dedicated to war. But one was dedicated to education, education. So uh, teacher, teachers and learning and knowledge, library science, 
these things are so important. Every big organization and these people who can teach and everything else, it's a big, very certainly a big process. You know? And from our side, again, we have such perspective, you know, from the Vedic culture. At the same time, too, we're so greedy, my goodness, again, it's like, it's, I like you're finding different people. You know? For example, I ran across Rumi. He's a, um, what do you call it, a Persian poet. And I've heard about him before. And uh, Rumi, Rumi says, don't go back to sleep. <laughs> Such a, yeah, we, in the morning you get up, the Bangalartic, and there's a tendency to go back to sleep. One of the biggest problems we have. But also in general, you wake up, you get initiated. Hey, don't go back to sleep. That's a powerful, nice phrase. So I followed the link. I looked him up in the Britannica first. I looked him up in the Wikipedia. And, uh, and uh, he's one of the most powerful. Uh, if I had to be speaking, any, any educated Muslim, Arabic Muslim, is going to respect Rumi. And if you start putting your ideas in that perspective, they're going to be stimulated to hear what you have to say. You know? and, and also in America, he's become one of the most uh, very, very respected, his poetry and translations. So I discovered something. Yeah. And so then from our side, from, from that side, there is Rumi, and we appreciate, okay, building bridges and so many things that can be done. But then uh, from our side, we have something to offer. Very nice, you know. At the same time, too, we're out to, to pirate. Our, our, our God is a thief. We're out to, to steal whatever we can from these people, and we'll use it for our own purposes. I'm sorry. You know, so I'm taking Rumi's phrase, don't go back to sleep, you know, and, uh, and, and using it for Krishna consciousness. So any more comments, questions, complaints? You know, what do we have here? We have Maite's writing was perspective. Yeah. So we'll be disposition. That's two words, this position. So it sounds like actually your this sounds like not. You know? But this position also means inclinations. All right, so how can we remain submissive in the body but under purpose? Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so we want to thank all of our participants. Srinivas Sundaradika Abhinandan. Arjuna Das Chandamukhi Carlos Roll. Yesterday was her birthday. She was 14 years old. Remember, remember what you were doing. Try to remember the kind of September when you were a shallow and callow young girl. <laughs> yeah, that's from the Fantastics. It's one of the longest running dramas in the history of the world. Yeah, it's very good content. Carlos Roll, Chaturama Palika, Chitkala. Okay. Uh, Chitra Gopi, uh, Maite, uh, Guru Govinda, Jambavan, Kirtita Devi Dasi, who's given up her, her, her bear and her pig. She's renounced. Lakshmanagra, Jaya Raman, Reti, Lalita Gopi, Devi Dasi, Mitravinda, Namachintamani, Rati Manjari, whose, whose car were broken into one time. One time she her car, the window was broken by, by people trying to steal the content. Ravanari Das, aha, Sabashini, Subal Saka, Krishna Pena, Sugopi Vada. So thank you all, and also all of our participants who are hearing this recording afterwards, even after we're dead. All of us, all of us are gone. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. We hope your Sankirtan is all successful today. <laughs>